Hi, Chef and Builder Janie Pendleton. A couple of years ago, I posted a recipe for my homemade Zoe laundry detergent. The outpouring has been tremendous. I want to thank all of my viewers, my subscribers. You have really taught me a lot, and I'm so glad that I have taught you something here on our little homestead journey. Now, I've had a lot of questions in the comment box. And if I can teach you things like this and how to save money and how I did it and how I got my kids all through college without debt, then my goodness, then I'm going to teach you. And if you're willing to sit back and listen, then, um, then more power to us both. Meanwhile, grab yourself a bar of Zoat Soap and we're going to teach you how this is made. All right, so number one question is number of bars of other soaps versus Zote soap. All right, so this is 400 grams. It would take almost three bars of the Fels Naphtha to get uh, the amount that you need for my recipe. Okay, so three bars of that versus one bar of the pink Zote. The pink Zote also has a brightener in it. And that's why people seem, I mean, that's why they seem to like my recipe so much. Now what I've done here is I've just grated my soap into a bowl. Just put a little muscle into it and grated it. Put those grated uh, soap shavings, just one bar of soap, 400 grams. That's 14.1 ounces. And I put this, you can use the white or you can use the pink. Okay, the white is like, like in a blue label, a white and blue label. That's fine. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. And in other countries, you have other, um, there's like a green bar, I think, in the UK. That's fine. Use that. That still works. Okay? So now what I've done is I've sprinkled that entire 400 grams of grated Zoat soap, and I sprinkled that here inside of about, oh, I'd say about three quarts of very, very hot, steamy water. Now, I didn't boil this. It was just a little bit of bubbles here on the bottom. All right, it'll soap up just a little bit, bubble up here just a little bit. That's fine. It is soap. Now people ask me, Janie, is this good for high efficiency machines? I've got a new machine and I don't want to clog it or a front load and I don't want to hurt it. Well, nobody wants to hurt, you know, a thousand, twelve hundred dollar machine. Uh, trust me, I understand that. I also have high efficiency machines. This is low sudsing. You can see this. It's low sudsing. You can definitely, it's definitely safe you for high efficiency machines. Matter of fact, people swear by it, and I do too. It's great for high efficiency machines. We'll go over cost of this here in just a minute, the cost savings. Now, this makes 10 gallons. What we're making here is going to make 10 gallons of liquid laundry detergent. The next question I get, Jane, can I do the dry version of this? Yes. You can take all the ingredients that I'm about ready to show you here, like the borax, the washing soda, the baking soda, and the awesome oxygen cleaner, and the zoat. You can grate this up, put this through your food processor, and uh, trust me, your food processor will really shine. It's perfectly safe, and um, rinse it really well, but yes, grate it up, and use about a tablespoon per load. Okay, so you can make this a dry mixture, all right? That was my other top question. Now, somebody asked me, have I changed my recipe since I first made that a few years back? Yes, I have. I still use one bar of the 400 grams of soap grated. I still start out with my water lightly steaming. But instead of a little less than two cups to two cups of the uh, borax here, I now put in almost three cups. It's like two and three quarters cups of borax because I'm in construction and I get so dirty my socks are so white by doing this I can't even begin to tell you can't even begin to tell you so I put in more borax and we're going to do this you can use a wire whisk or you can use a spoon the spoon is dedicated to my laundry detergent I don't use it for food you can even take like a, a black marker and you can write on here you know for detergent um, I also make a zote 
uh, dish liquid you can go right here and get that recipe and you can make your homemade dish liquid uh, I got some friends out here fishing on the pond right now and I gave them a little sliver of bar of this and they're out catfishing with it so I'll let you know how they do but yes you can catfish with zote soap something in it attracts them I don't know see how nice and thick this is getting that borax has a reaction with this and, um, and yeah it's just nice and thick so this should gel up for you. You shouldn't have any problems at all. But number three, this is probably the top question that I get. People ask me, Jane, if mine does not gel up like this, is it still good? Yes, do not throw that away. It is still very good. There's nothing wrong with your soap. And as long as you added water and, and some of those ingredients, whether it thickens up or not, it's still usable. You're still going to enjoy your laundry soap. This is just some adjustments that I've made, and you can see how nice and thick this is. If you want it to be a little thicker, put it back on the heat and add a little more borax. Soap is safe for baby laundry. It's gentle on your clothes. And my next uh, most asked question is, is can I use it in hot and cold water? Yes, you can. You can use this for darks and lights alike. Okay, so we can use this on jeans, our favorite darkest pair of blue jeans, or our brightest white t-shirts. This has a brightener in it and it's great for collars. Uh, you can almost see the brightener in it. But see how that looks right there? There you go. It's kind of like a, you know, and you can wash clothes with this just like this is right here. If you want to just take a sliver or what have you. Um, you can take a little bit of this right here at the stage it is right now. And you can put this in another jar, add a little bit of water and some awesome clean, shake it up, and that be your stain remover. As a matter of fact, why don't we just do that right now, and I'll show you how I do that at this stage. Right here, I just have an old body wash bottle. Here it just says Laundry Zote Stain Pre-Treater. What we're to do is we're just going to put our funnel right in here, and I've got this filled up about a third of the way with water. All right, now I'm going to take some of this right here, and I'm just going to pour it down right here into the funnel. And this will make your uh, stove top really shine. If you've got a glass top or whatever, this will really make it shine. So I'm just putting a couple of spoonfuls in here. I'm just going to take a little bit of my washing soda. And I'm just going to put that down in here just like that. Just a little bit of the oxygen clean. This is my pre-treater. Just a little bit. About a tablespoon. This is just a little bonus recipe for you here today with my soap. Okay, and here I have some vegetable glycerin. It's 100% pure, um, versatile skincare vegetable glycerin. And we're going to add this vegetable glycerin, just a little squeeze into here. And this one is going to help us with our separation problem. There you go, about a teaspoon. All right, now we're going to pop our lid on here. There we go. And we're going to give that a good shake. Okay, and there you have it. You have my Zote Stain Pre-Treater. Okay, and this is great stuff. I absolutely love it. We're recycling. Uh, you can use a shampoo bottle. I just really like this bottle. It's really a uh, slim line and it fits in my cabinet, you know, easily between the detergent bottles. And I just really like this. Make yourself up um, two or three of these. Uh, these last, I'd say probably about, oh, maybe nine months to a year it's probably about how long I've had them last me okay so we're just going to do this really good give it a really good shake and uh, we're going to let this sit and if we've done this right it shouldn't get too hard if it does then just squeeze it back out of the bottle add some more hot water and get it till you get it right that glycerin should help that from getting too thick and by the way you can wash dishes with this as well all right this is nice and heated through. All of our chunks of borax has been dissolved. Yeah, it's all been dissolved. So let's take this on over now and let's finish showing you my changes on how I make my liquid laundry detergent. Now with a paint stir stick, just get a nice big stir stick, or you could get one of those uh, drywall mud stirrers or paint stirrers that you put on a drill and you can do it with that as well. But I'll just use this. I'm, I'm not lazy, I'll use that. All right, and what we're going to start out with is we're going to start out with instead of two cups of uh, washing soda, that's Arm & Hammer washing soda, 
I'm going to go with almost three cups. So that's two and three quarters cups to three cups of the Arm & Hammer washing soda. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. Now to that, I'm going to add the soap that, was, that we heated up on the stove that had the, um, the borax in it. Okay. Now while the water's still hot in the faucet, pour that in here. As much of that out of here as possible. I'm going to just fill that up right there. It's perfect. I want to show you this, how good this is for cleaning pans. Look, I mean, as a chef, look how clean my pans are. In there, give that a stir. You got time to work with this. That water was really hot tap water. Now to that, I'm going to add one cup of baking soda. I did not increase my amount of baking soda. I stayed with a cup of baking soda. That helps remove the odors out of your clothes. So one cup of baking soda. Let me give that a stir. This smells so good, just like it is. You do not have to add scents to this. At this point, you can add the lavender oil, um, a linen scent, essence oils. You can add uh, my favorite, which is the lemon and the butter scents, which makes this smell like a lemon meringue pie. It's, I mean, ask, I mean, read the comments below. People swear by it. They swear by this recipe. See, already it's looking thick. And again, like I said, if it doesn't thicken up, it's still good. Don't throw it away. It's still good. And I prefer the Zotso. I'm not getting paid by them to say that. I love Zotso. I wouldn't use anything else. This is my favorite. But in other countries, they have a thing called a green soap. Somebody said they use that, and it worked great. Um, whatever you can find in your area. Okay, so we're just kind of blending that in here just a little bit. It's already thickening up. And right here is my secret weapon, right here, okay? It is totally awesome oxygen clean cleaner. See that? And I'm gonna put a cup of that in here. Give that a stir up, it smells so good. Lordy, lordy, lordy. But after you make this, you want to do laundry. You want to, and you can add uh, linen essence oil or lavender to help you sleep. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do with this and scents. Just uh, pick out your favorite scents. That lady told me that she put an actual rosemary smell in here. Thought that was odd, but but then again, I put a butter scent in mine, so I mean that's odd too. But um, I like citrus scents, so you could put lime or lemon or orange, uh, or you can just leave it like it is. You don't have to add any scents at all because this smells good, just like it is. Now, homemade laundry detergent will never smell as strong as all those chemical-filled store-bought detergents that we buy. Store-bought detergents were giving me severe migraine headaches. So that's why I started making my own, and my headaches cleared up by quite a bit. I mean, they were severe migraines. So I got rid of all the chemicals and all the scents in my house, and that worked for me. So we're just going to keep blending this now. Now I like, I like the way this smells just like it is. Now this makes 10 gallons of laundry detergent, liquid laundry detergent. And again, you can just mix all this together and make it in a food processor and blend all these same ingredients together and make it dry. Put it in a glass jar, mark it, you know, laundry detergent, powder, and, um, and use it as a tablespoon, uh, per tablespoon. But this right here, we're going to fill up to about right here, and that's going to give us enough that we can leave a little bit of shaking room in each one gallon jug. Now to answer the last question as far as making this goes, can you leave this in the five gallon bucket to save room on all those jugs? No, you cannot. And I'm going to tell you why. If you do, half the recipe and then fill the rest of the way up with water. This turns in such, into such a thick, gelatinous substance that unless you're willing to come in here and, you know, spoon out a little like this much for each load, because this takes a half a cup per load, 
because uh, this right here is a very concentrated stuff right here, okay? It's a half of a cup per load. So I wouldn't suggest leaving it in here unless you have the recipe. I just wouldn't. Okay, so we just want to stir it really, really well. Now you can fill this the rest of the way now with water. I add, excuse me, I add at this stage my favorite scent, which is the final touch, fresh crystals, crystal boosters. And this is called Alive. And this is my new change to it. I really, really, really love this scent. Just a capful. Just a capful. It softens my water here in the country and it gives a nice scent to my laundry. Ooh, that's strong. Might want to open the windows when you do that. <laughs> Again, that's something that doesn't give me quite the migraine that the other chemicals do. You can leave that out, but I really like how that softens my hard water because we don't have a water softener here. All it is is Epsom salts and scent. That's all that it is. And you can kind of Again, you can add some scents if you want to. You can even add extracts from the baking aisle. Um, that's fine. Mm, that smells good. That smells so good. Let's throw that in. All right. And last but not least, this separates. People say, oh, Jane, it separated. Well, first of all, this doesn't have all the chemicals in it that, um, that you get in the store bought. I say it again. So it's going to separate. A little, a little muscle put into it, shake each jar, shake it really well with the water, and you are, you're going to get separation. But one of the ways that you can stop separation is to blend it with like a paint, the paint whip thing, and also again to add the vegetable glycerin. Okay, and you can get this off eBay. I think I paid $1.50 for it. All right, I'm just going to add some now. I'm going to add about three tablespoons. Right there, three tablespoons. I'm going to blend that in, and that will help with some of the separation. And again, if you stir this with the paint stirrer or the, uh, the drywall mud stirrer on the end of a drill, that helps as well, you know, to whip it up a little bit. And you can do that when it's cool, and you can do this when it's hot. Either way, it doesn't matter. But that does help with some of the separation. So that's it. This is the changes that I made. I'm going to fill the rest of this up to the top here with some hot water. Got this at Big Lots. It's just one of those funnel cake uh, things. And then I got a funnel that's got an angle to it right here. Then when I put it down inside of my one gallon jugs and when I pour it in, this really helps me to not get, you know, the flow of the syrup of the, of the detergent all down the front of the bucket and all down my floor. Okay? So that's how I fill the jugs. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with water the rest of the way. About an inch from the top. You don't want to get this too high, too high of water because this, when this swells, it'll swell up and out of your bucket. So you have to be careful. I've heard tell people tell me that. So, so we're going to give it one more two minute stir. We're going to uh, put the lid on this, sit this in the corner of my kitchen, and we're going to let this firm up for about 8 to 10 hours. And we're going to come back and we're going to stir it two or three times. Okay? And those are my changes. I hope that you enjoy them. I still do like adding the lemon uh, and the uh, butter scents to this. I like that still. But I really like the, the way this softens my water, the final touch. And I like the way my sheets smell with that. So... This time I've added that in this time. I even add that now to my laundry crystal boosters to my homemade Epsom salts. Just take Epsom salts and this right here instead of the expensive scent and this cuts this. This makes this go a lot further. Because that's all that is is Epsom salts. But did you know that? That that was Epsom salts? So yeah, I've made a few changes over the years on some of my recipes. And this is just one of them. And I'll tell you, I get so dirty. I want to show you my towels. Let me show you my tea towels. They make my cabinets look dirty. They're so white. Okay? These are my tea towels. Look at the one on the ground here. It's so white. And this is good for collars. It has a brightener in it. So it's great for darks, collars, or whites. And remember, 
It's not suds that clean your clothes. That's why this works in high efficiency machines. It is what's under the suds right here that's cleaning your clothes, okay? Now whether this thickens up or not, it doesn't matter. This is still going to work for you, okay? So if it doesn't thicken up, don't panic. Still use it. It's still good stuff. Now what I'll do is tomorrow I'll stir this and give this a really good stirring. I'll fill up 10 clear jugs, 10 one-gallon jugs, halfway with water, and then I'll, I'll pour this in the other half, give them a good shake, and we'll put them in storage, and these will store for up to a year. Now, I usually go through 10 gallons of this about every eight to nine months. And again, just remember not to fill it up, not to fill it up too full, because when this starts to firm, this will rise just a little bit and you'll get like a little hard top on here, but we'll come back and we'll show that to you here in just a couple hours, okay? Meanwhile, this is Chef and Builder Janie Pendleton, and I just wanna thank you for coming along on our little homestead. Be sure and hit that subscribe button because we love learning from you as much as we love teaching you, and we really hope you're getting something out of these uh, videos that we're doing. It takes all day to uh, do one, especially a questions and answers video or an update video like this one because you want to be sure and go through thousands of comments and try to combine them with the most asked questions. I mean, I probably have uh, about $8 in this because I already had the bucket and I already had the stir stick. As a matter of fact, I got this free and the bucket was like $1.50 to $2.50. It's probably about what you're going to pay for a bucket. Uh, the borax, the washing soda, the oxygen cleaner. You can get the awesome oxygen cleaner at the Dollar Tree for a dollar for a little thing of it. Uh, you could also get it, we well, used to be able to get it at Dollar General, but they don't sell it there that I know of anymore. And I got the citrus scented one, so that goes really good with, with the Zote Soap. And it just smells so good in here right now. I just This is one of my favorite things to do. I literally look forward to, to, to making this. I look forward to it. Hi, we're back. It is the next day, and I just wanted to show you what this looks like. See? And I stirred it two or three times during the night. Uh, I went ahead and let it go through the night. That was fine. Now, again, I do get people to ask me, and I'm going to reiterate on this. Can you leave this in the bucket? You could if you have a nice, tight-fitting lid on here. But you'd have to keep a stick in here or something, and you'd have to stir it every time you wanted to add something to your... See, it's just too thick. And it's very concentrated this way. I mean, you'd probably only need about an eighth of a cup or less. Um, probably less than that per load. And um, you'd have to stir it every time you open the jar. To me, it's just a lot easier putting it uh, in, going ahead and filling up the jugs halfway with water and filling them up the other half the way with this solution. And it's just a lot easier. I know it's a lot more, you know, it's harder to store. But, um, but if you live in a warm climate, you could store it in the garage, in a garage cabinet or something. Um, anyway, this is how I make my homemade laundry detergent. And again, I'm just going to fill up some jugs, some one-gallon jugs, uh, halfway with water. And then I'm going to fill it up the other half uh, way with the laundry solution here. And that's what we're going to have. That's what we're going to use. And you're going to use this added up to be about... 1.3 cents per load. That's 1.3 cents per load. Your area might be different. The cost of things might be a little different in your area. And of course, I already had the bucket and the stir stick. So, but this right here is the consistency of it. It smells absolutely heavenly. This is safe for baby laundry. I mean, it's as safe as Delft, but it really brightens, whitens, and cleans. And it's just, um, like I said, you add this. Uh, people say, oh, oh, it's separated, or mine didn't get thick. You can still use it, okay? It's just fine. This does not give me headaches. I played and played in this yesterday, and it still did not give me a headache. So you've got homemade laundry detergent that costs you under $10 to make almost a year's worth. You can't beat that. You absolutely cannot beat that. We are back. We've got all the jugs here filled up with the laundry detergent. And I just have to tell you, for some reason, we don't know why, but this made almost 12 gallons instead of 10. And I didn't even fill up the uh, five gallon bucket all the way. Sorry, I've got a dog here jumping on me. <laughs> okay, so we ended up making 12 gallons of the laundry detergent. 
this is very concentrated stuff. Um, I mean, I had to break out some uh, vinegar bottles <laughs> and uh, and some other milk jugs. And then right here, um, I made some without the borax in it, and this is for delicates and for pre-treaters. This is for like baby laundry and stuff like that. I don't always like to put the borax in with my baby laundry. And then here, um, I had enough left over to make some pre-treater. 